Uh, good evening and uh, welcome to the Permanent Public Building Committee meeting for February 12th, 2024. This meeting is accessible via Zoom and is being recorded. Uh, just as a reminder, under the governor's emergency order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, General Mass General Laws Chapter 30A, Section 220, uh, issued March 12th, 2020, and in effect until the term termination of the emergency, meeting of public bodies may be conducted virtually provided that adequate access is provided to the public. On March 29, 2023, the remote public meeting provision was extended through March 31st of 2025. Uh, because it is a, um, a Zoom meeting, all votes will be conducted by roll call. So with that, the first item for business is the uh, minutes of the most recent meeting. And uh, I'm gonna just call them up on my system now. And that is the meeting minutes of January 8th, 2024. Is there a motion to approve the minutes as presented? So moved. motion to approve. So moved. I think the mo motion has been made and seconded. I heard a second. Um, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify. Well, I'll take that back. We're going to do a roll call vote. Sorry. Worst of habit. Uh, roll call vote. Uh, uh, Stuart? Aye. Lynn? Aye. George? Aye. Roy's not here yet. Um, Irwin? I have to abstain. I was not present. It's, it, you, I think, um, didn't we conclude, uh, Catherine, from consulting with the uh, uh, town council that it is still permissible to vote? Yes. Um, yeah, okay. Yes. So you can still vote uh, for them, uh, Irwin. That, that's something that we, that was a misconception on our, our part. You can vote for them if you wish. I'll vote aye. Thank you very much. And the chair votes aye. Thank you. That takes care of the minutes. Uh, the next item for business is the um, Emory Grover renovation. And for that, we will, uh, I'll recognize as I can to lead things off. All right. Find my notes here. Why doesn't this, this just doesn't like to come up. Hang on a sec. Yeah, get the cat to do it for you. Yeah, she's probably more proficient. Actually, her touch would be better than mine. That's for sure. <laughs> All right, so we'll talk a little about the schedule here, and then I'll show some uh, recent pictures. Um, roof work is substantially complete. They're out there again today. Had a good day today, but I don't think they'll be able to finish up this week because, well, if there's a significant amount of snow. If there's not a lot that might go away. Um, metal trim at the North Dormer around the mechanical room is substantially complete. Uh, wall framing on the first and second floor is substantially complete, and they're working on the uh, lower level and the third floor. Uh, MEP rough-in is ongoing. Loading dock is completed, uh, the structural work, that is, and the elevator work is ongoing. So if I can just... Hopefully not uh, get the cat too involved here. There we go. So this is typical throughout the building on the uh, first and second floor now. You can see the framing. Uh, you can see some of the rough in, the, the pulling the wires. They've got the uh, cassette units for the HVAC in. Can I just uh, inter quickly jump that, keep that picture for a second? Yeah. The only thing that caught my attention Ken was the old slat, the old horsehair mm -hmm. um, stuff in the back. It looks just all ratted. Is that going to get removed, cleaned up? I mean, it might be it's behind gonna, walls, but it kind of looks sloppy. The the in on the other side is that barrel ceiling that was around the old entry. Yeah. So this is somewhat kind of the backup to that, but you won't see that because there'll be a there'll be a a, a sheetrock wall there. But it's all kind of loose boards and stuff, right? It it is. It'll get it'll get cleaned up, but it doesn't get fully removed. Okay, I just just it got, caught my attention for. Yep. Okay, thank you. Um, more of the uh, the deck work uh, in the uh, chimneys. That's the uh, the dormer around the mechanical room, and you can see they've uh, installed that uh, uh, metal work. 
some of the copper up in the roof that they're continuing to work on along with some of the sheet metal. That's the, uh, the, the loading dock. It's been waterproofed inside. The concrete work is complete. More of the inside is on the lower level. Uh, you can see the, uh, the acoustic chipboard uh, ceiling. You can see them doing the frame out down there. So any questions on schedule or pictures or what have you? Any significant changes to the schedule since our last meeting? Uh, no, we're still we're still at least two months delayed, if not pushing three, maybe. We're we're trying to see where we end up with the uh, um, yeah the rough in uh, rough inspections. Once we have the rough inspections. Uh, done we can get a better handle on what it's uh what it's truly costing us but the uh what we're running into now is many of the subs um can't get guys if the union they can't get guys in the union hall from the union hall uh to uh the other both the union and non-union subs expected to be there two months ago and obviously they're not they weren't in two months ago so they had to do something with their crews. So they're on other jobs now. So we're we're in a bit of a manpower pinch, especially with mechanical trades. But once the rough in is done and we get the sheetrock guys started on the first floor, which hopefully will be before the end of the month, we can get a better handle on how much beyond the two months we're going to be. Is is the problem a general problem of lack of manpower everywhere? Or is this yeah, it, it, it's, through, it's, throughout the, it's throughout the industry, but these contractors have, you know, they get the schedule from the GC and, you know, they're expecting to go in, say, the 1st of December. And the 1st of December comes and they're not in there until mid to late January. Well, they got to do something with those guys that they've got. So sure. they send them off to another job. And there's no yeah. one in the halls to replace them. I see. So that sounds like it could be a a, a bigger problem. It, it could be if it becomes pervasive uh, go, going forward. Yes. Um, the other where it will really rear its ugly head is if we go too much beyond, say, the first of June, with the mechanicals at least, we'll end up with uh, all the summer slammers and the schools started, much like we have one um over at Elliot. So the uh um it could it could be could get worse. Uh they put Connor's pushing them to go, go, go. Um but you can only go as fast as you've got bodies for. Okay. Anything else? No. Let's all right let's talk about the, review the ACL here. Um, most of these are ones that you've seen. Um, we've, we had a change order on there that's in this month's, uh, I've had a PCO for what was referred to as bulletin 27. There are still some items on that being priced out. So we created a new, uh, PCO for the remainder of the bulletin 27 changes. But when we get to the change order, uh, you'll see, uh, some of the items from that are are in there as a PCO. Any questions on the ACL? All right. Let's go to Richard, we can uh, move into the uh, um, voting items. Okay, terrific. Um, change order first, I take it, Ken? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, the first time we have is change order number 11 for uh, M. O'Connor contracting in the amount of $39,388.45 uh, general contractor budget. Uh, the uh, chair will move uh, th th this item. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, we will proceed to the roll call vote. Uh, Stuart? Aye. Lynn? Aye. George? Aye. Aye. Okay, is uh, Roy in? I can't see from here. Is, is Roy in? No. Okay. Um, Irwin? Aye. Okay. And uh, Michael? Aye. 
Ann? Aye. And the chair votes aye. Thank you. Okay, the next item is um, invoice number 14 for uh, M. O'Connor Contracting, referencing requisition number 14 through January of 2024 in the amount of $611,791.06. As out of the general contractor's budget, the chair will so move. Is there a second? Second. Okay, thank you, Michael. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? Did you say... 611 9108. 611 79106 is what I have. Yeah, I get a, I get a typo. Okay. That's because I wasn't wearing my glasses reading the rec. <laughs> That's okay. No, no worries. That's okay. So, uh, oh, uh, Catherine, 06 is the correct figure, correct? Uh, yes, it is. Okay, great. All right. So it's 611 79106. Okay, I believe the uh, motion has been made and seconded. Uh, no further discussion, I take it. Uh, hearing none, we'll proceed to the roll call vote. Stuart? Aye. Lynn? Aye. George? Aye. Erwin? Aye. Michael? Aye. Ann? Aye. And the chair votes aye. Thank you. Okay, next item is invo uh, invoice number 26646, BH plus A. This is for referencing December 2023 Emory Grover for architectural services in the amount of 19,008.95. The chair will so move. Is there a second? Second. Second. Okay, thank you. Uh, any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to the roll call vote. Stuart? Aye. Lynn? Lynn? Oh. Where is Lynn? Okay, okay, we're not sure where Lynn is, but um, George, I'm here. Oh, okay, give an eye. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and George voted aye, I take it. Okay, yeah, uh, thank you. Erwin, aye, Michael, aye, Ann, aye, and the chair votes aye. Thank you. And then we have uh, two invoices for UTS of Massachusetts. The first is invoice number 109800 for December 2023 materials testing. And the other is invoice number 110191 for January 24, 2024 materials testing. The first invoice for December 2023 is the amount of $300. The second invoice for January 2024 is the amount of $780 for a total of $1,080 even. Uh, and this is for miscellaneous miscellaneous budget. The chair will will um, so move the uh, the invoices together in the amount of one thousand eighty dollars and zero cents. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Thank you. And any discussion? Okay. Hearing none, we'll proceed to the roll call vote. Stuart. Aye. Lynn. Aye. George. Aye. Uh, Irwin. Aye. Michael? Aye. Ann? Aye. And the chair votes aye. And I believe that's it for the uh, invoices for and change orders for Emory Grover. Uh, any other items of, for discussion with respect to Emory Grover before we close out this agenda item? Can, can we talk just a bit about the, uh, uh, the amount of money we have left in the contingency? Absolutely. Ken, I, I'd, I'd love to hear your comments on where you think we are. And the um, reason I mentioned it, of course, is that um, I, I was talking to John Conley this week, and John asked me the question, how are we doing both schedule-wise and cost-wise? And uh, I told him about the schedule being somewhere around two to three months delay, but that shouldn't be a problem with uh, things uh, going pretty well at uh, – at, uh, the current location, temporary location, but I wasn't sure about the costs yet. Um, but I told him I would get back to him if there was any significant change. So my question is, how are we doing with regard to costs? Are we in panic mode? Are we in good shape? Are we, you know, how we're are we in, doing? We're in, we're in if, if, if we're a uh, stoplight, we're in yellow mode. 
we're cautiously moving forward. We're analyzing every last change uh, to see what we can do to uh, reduce the uh, the impact. But we've only got 551,000 left in the contingency. Um, now, granted, we've you know got another six months to the to the project, so um, it's not not like we've got another year left on the project, but um, I'm uh, cautiously optimistic, but we still, you know, we're just in the rough end stage with the mechanicals. So anything, anything can happen, but there's nothing that's on the horizon that's uh, keeping me up at night. Well, I guess the question becomes, <clears throat> when is the time when we start thinking about do we have enough money to finish the project uh, or when will we have to go back and ask for more, et cetera? So uh, that's... It, it, we're, we're at least three months from that, George. Okay. We really, we really have to get all the mechanical, the rough end, the mechanical is done. Um, the walls buttoned up and then we'll have a better idea at that point. And that's probably not going to happen until early to mid May. Okay. And thinking about taking the worst case where we might have to go back and ask for some money, uh, I guess the question would be, um, how do we do that? And Hank, do you have any thoughts about that? Well, if if we don't have a defined need at this point, we can't put in a warrant article in. I understand that. And so our, our only avenue would be to go back for emergency funds to FinCom. Um, I think that, um, I, like Ken, I'm cautiously optimistic that we will not have to do it. Um, we we do have, um, we will have eventually some uh, rebate funds from Eversource. And one approach, once those are fully defined, would be to request reimbursement associated with those that amount. Um, because those, uh, any, any of those, um, energy, um, incentives go back to the, uh, the general fund. Um, but I, I'm not, uh, looking at half a million, um, I don't see I think we will, by the end of this, we will probably work it down to zero, but I don't see our need to go back for additional funding. Okay. So we might need something, but that something might be able to be provided uh, by FinCom. That's really our only source. Right. Um, because, I mean, you can't get anything ready for Maytown meeting because you don't have a reason to do it. And right. So that would push it off to November town meeting, which would be a, a problem because we wouldn't be able to get it approved in time to pay off our contractors. Well, we might, but it'll be close. Yeah, so. I mean, I I think the the buyout. I mean, we just need to be very cautious about um, adding, um, not exceeding our FF and E and IT budgets. Um, and we're, we're working through some requested changes now, uh, but it, there clearly are some deducts and some ads that we'll have to sort through. Okay, so the question is, how do, how do I answer John's question, which is a legitimate question? Um, uh, how do I answer his question where we don't anticipate, you know, we're cautiously optimistic uh, we're in a situation where we have a little over half a million dollars left. And um, right now, it seems like that will carry us through the project. Um, but we don't know no, I yet. Wouldn't say, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say that, George. It, it may very well carry us through the project, but we're not going to know for another three months or so. Well, that's that's what I said, really. That's what I meant. Yeah, we, we don't know. Isn't it 700000 Ken? The no, current five, balance is seven hundred thousand. We're anticipating. Yeah, but but there's it, but the, but you deduct you take the ACL off of that, Barry. And oh, that okay. brings it down right. to five fifty one. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, any other questions or comments on this particular topic? Okay, anything else before the, for the project before we close out the agenda item? Okay, hearing none, uh, we will move on then to our next agenda item. Thank you all. And that is the uh, RTU replacement at Elliott. And uh, I believe we have some invoices to uh, to to stress. Yeah. Quick, and just I'll... a quick update. Just yeah. a quick update on that. Uh, um, as we discussed back in January, they were in uh, um, over uh, Christmas break and did some work both over Christmas break and a little bit after they got the pumps in and the, the tanks in, they'll be back in uh, February vacation and April vacation doing some of the structural work and measurements and some more uh, piping work uh, as we get ready for the the real push, which will come in the first half of June. All right, very good. Any other uh, questions for Ken or Hank on uh, this particular project? Yeah, after we go through the Elliot, um, I do want to talk a bit about Broadmeadow. Certainly. Okay. We will we'll, we'll factor that in to the time timing. So uh, we'll proceed then to the um, the invoices for the R2 replacement at Elliot. The first item is uh, invoice number three for Enterprise Equipment Company. Uh, that's referencing requisition number three through January 2024 in the amount of $4,750 even, and that's out of the general contractor's budget. The chair will so move. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any questions or discussion items regarding this invoice? Hearing none, we'll proceed to the roll call vote. Uh, Stuart? Aye. <laughs> Uh, Lynn? Aye. George? Aye. Irwin? Aye. Barry? Aye. Ann? I'm sorry, aye. Oh, no, no worries. <laughs> okay. And the chair both aye. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the second uh, item is uh, two invoices, which will uh, appear together for GGD Consulting Engineers. The first is invoice number 122416. That's for December 2023 20, BM services in the amount of $20,000 even as Brian Metal Services. The second invoice uh, is uh, 122417, also GGD Consulting Engineers for December 2023 services for Elliott in the amount of $4,698.14 for a total of $24,698.14 out of the designer budget. The chair will so move as to the two invoices combined as it, to the figure 24,698.14. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Erwin. Any discussion on either or both invoices? Okay, hearing none, we'll proceed to the roll call vote. Stuart? Aye. Lynn? Aye. George? Aye. Irwin? Aye. Barry? Aye. Ann? Aye. And the chair votes aye. Thank you. And the final invoice uh, uh, under RT replacement is invoice number 370272 for NV5. That's for December 2023 and January 2024 commissioning in the amount of $361 even, and that's out of the miscellaneous budget. Is there any discussion on this? Uh, well, the, the chair will move uh, this, uh, this amount, and uh, is there a second, or actually before that, yeah, is there a second to the motion? Second. Thank you, George. Is there discussion on the motion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to the roll call vote. Stuart? Aye. Lynn? Aye. George? Aye. Erwin? Aye. Barry? Aye. Okay. Uh, Ann? Aye. And the chair votes aye. Thank you. Those are all the invoices I have for RTU replacement services for Elliott. Um, Ken, uh, Hank, uh, rather, you'd like to talk about um, Broadmeadow? So we can do that at this time. 
Uh, yes, I, I did send out a, um, this is it, uh, I sent out a schedule and I will try to enlarge this up for you. Um, we're proceeding with um, the construction documents and anticipate getting 75% CDs by Friday. And we'll be going through a cost estimate and reconciliation process. At the same time, um, Hill International uh, is preparing the RFQ for the um, HVAC general contractor. And uh, those uh, requests for qualifications um, will be available um, on the 15th uh, or later this week. Um, we need to, this committee needs to um, appoint the pre-qualification committee uh, that will be reviewing those uh, submittals and, um, and recommending back to this company uh, to this committee, um, uh, those HVAC GCs who um, who meet the thresholds associated with pre-qualification. And we went through a similar process on Emory Grover, and I'm recommending that that sub uh, pre-qualification review committee be comprised of Ken Sargent, David Billings from Hill, Barry Dulong and Louis Vieira from GGD, uh, representing the um, the town, the designer, and the OPM. Um, and so I'd, I'd request um, a vote on that uh, pre-qualifications committee. And um, as I say, their, um, their results will be coming back to this committee uh, in um, in late later in March to um, to approve their their recommendations. All right, uh, happy to uh, make the motion. Uh, the chair will move that the uh, uh, the the PVC commit uh, appoint a or approve the following people for pre qualification review committee. This is in connection with the Broadmeadow project. Uh, Ken Sargent, Town OPM, Dave Billings of Hill. Uh, Barry DeLong from the town BMD and Luis Vieira from GGD. Uh, is there a second on the motion? Second. Thank you, Lynn. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll uh, proceed to roll call vote. Um, I assume it's the same roster as uh, with respect to Elliot. Is that correct? Thank correct. You. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, Stuart? Aye. Lynn? Aye. George? Aye. Erwin? Aye. Barry? Barry? Aye. Thank you. <laughs> Anne? Aye. And the chair votes aye. Thank you. Um, any other discussion items with respect to uh, the Brian Meadow uh, RT replacement before we move on? Um, we will, after we get through the uh, cost reconciliation, We'll have a better understanding as to whether we can afford to um, to, to include the air source heat pumps, similar to what uh, is or was approved by um, in the Elliot. Um, we may not have the budget to um, uh, to include those in the final uh, offer, but I think we will include them as part of a uh, an ad alternate or yeah, an ad alternate, um, just in case we get very favorable bids. Hank, is there any reason to expect uh, there to be uh, inflationary pressures or do you expect that things might have been, might be getting a little bit better uh, price-wise so that Broadmeadow might come in uh, a, and in a much more favorable way. Um, if I could, if I could, Hank. Yeah. Um, one, uh, Elliot's was favorable because Enterprise, the winning bidder, was uh, was fairly low. 
came in under our cost estimates. So we 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 grabbed a break there. Um, but what we're seeing, at least with materials, uh, there is there well, there they don't seem to be inflating certainly as rapidly as they were a year and a half, two years ago. There's no downward pressure on on them. Uh, prices are sticky on the ups on the on the downside, as they say. So yeah. um, I would uh, uh, if enterprise can sharpen their pencil like they did for Elliot, I think we have a good shot at it. Uh, otherwise, I think we'll be using the whole of the budget and we won't get the air source heat pump. Yeah, and at, at the end of the project, um, again, if we were able to um, capture the rebates and pump them back into the project, we might be able to afford it. But timing wise, we need to make that decision during the bidding process. And it'll likely be um, a substantial increase if we do it at a later time. Um, so we're we're investigating that. We're also looking at a different, potentially different location for those air source heat pumps, a ground mounted system as opposed to roof mounted. But um, that that uh, and incrementally, what do you expect that cost to be approximately? Um, could be another half a million. Yeah, it's between five and six hundred is what we tentatively had it pegged at. Yeah, and we we don't we also want to be cautious not to spend our contingency. <laughs> so mm -hmm. we, we don't want to go into it bare bones. It's not worth going back and asking for more. Um, um, just to add to this, I can do this on my own as well, and I can pull it out of the Warren article. Um, and I've done that in the past with other boilers. And it's, you know, if this is successful at the Elliott, this air source heat pump, and it truly reduces my need for turning those boilers on, especially in the summertime and in the, uh, you know, November, uh, the early winter. I'm certainly going to pursue this outside of the project if we can't afford it in the project. Okay, so th there may be another alternative is what you're saying, Barry. Yeah, yeah. I, can, I can do this on my own outside of the project. Yep. Yeah. Or, okay. Or, or we might even be able to do it um, with remaining funds at the end of the project um, that could be then used for that purpose. Uh, had, hadn't thought about that, Barry, until you mentioned it, but that's another possibility. And and I think it, it also certainly will help in terms of the lowering the carbon use um, for the building, if we we're able to put those in. Okay, good. Thanks. Thanks for the explanation. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments before we move on? Okay, hearing none, we will uh, we'll proceed to the next uh, uh, item on the agenda, which is the Pollard Middle School. And for that, uh, Hank, uh, I'll uh, let you uh, proceed and uh, we can introduce our guests uh, who need no introduction, but we're happy to welcome them anyway, <laughs> Donald and, and Jason. So, um, so. so we, uh, as I think we mentioned the last time, um, the town, um, Let's see, am I sharing? Let me share my screen. Um, the town was invited uh, by the MSBA and indicated that our eligibility period would begin on uh, the 1st of May. Um, and their criteria is that Within, and, within a 270 day period, uh, the town would need to complete all of the steps within the eligibility module one um, in order to, to get the feas feasibility study agreement signed. Having looked at this and looked at our overall schedule that we were projecting previously, we are gonna try to do it within the first 90 days. Um, and so in that regard, the school department is looking at the language for the 
initial compliance certification. It's a form that needs to be filled in and signed. Um, there are discussions ongoing about who would sit on the school building committee. The PBBC would be the core of that uh, group. And uh, adding to that would likely be one person from the uh, school committee and the principal um, and, and Barry Dulong. Um, and we'd have to discuss further with the um, MSBA if there are any additional people above and beyond those three that would be part of the uh, school building committee. Um, they have certain requirements, um, but I think there is some flexibility. And as you may recall at Sunita Williams, we had um, uh, initially two members from the school committee and then eventually the principal uh, joined in. Um, school committee is also working on the educational profile and the enrollment projection. Um, that um, will likely be a discussion with the MSBA. They need to review their system for evaluating, but um, school department does annual uh, assessments in terms of uh, enrollment across the district. And that is, um, that type of information gets fed into uh, this submission. Um, and then we are, all three of us, along with the building maintenance department, putting together the information associated with the maintenance and capital planning. Um, and that um, uh, there, there are forms that we've been able to download to see that what their questions are. We're preparing that information, but we won't have the online um, access until after May 1st to populate that information into their forms and make the formal submittal. Um, on the town warrant, there is um, a recommendation for an authorization for funding the feasibility, where normally, um, as noted here, that might come last in the sequence. Uh, in, in our case, it will come early in the sequence. And um, we've had discussions both with Doran Whittier and um, Hill and others about uh, what, what the appropriate amounts are for that. But um, as I say, uh, we have been working in anticipation of May 1st, the vote at town meeting, town meeting starts on the 6th. And I don't know if we can make all of our submittals on the, uh, 2nd of May. <laughs> we'll try. Um, but we'll also have um, preliminary discussions uh, with our project manager at the MSBA at least a couple of weeks prior, and we are setting up where possible other discussions in advance. Anna, have I missed anything here? Um, I, I think the only thing I might add is that we, um, because the eligibility period doesn't begin until May 1, um, we are likely already off schedule to the preliminary schedule we had put together for the capital plan. Um, we are trying to regain the schedule um, by October 2026, which is when we would have, uh, we would go before town meeting for construction funds potentially, and of course, a ballot question, um, assuming that all is approved. Um, of course, we're trying to, um, to the extent possible, stay on schedule in order to avoid any um, escalation of cost due to a prolonged schedule. So I think that's why we're really trying to um, complete this first section uh, as quickly as possible. And let me bring up the uh, core program overview process. Um, to refresh everyone's memory, I think you saw this at one of our earlier meetings. 
So what we've been talking about is this module one eligibility period. And then once that is complete and we have the um, signed agreement that enables us to move forward, um, then we have to go through module two, which is forming the team. Uh, and that starts off with getting designated um, as the OPM, the town OPM. Uh, we would need to have reinforcements, particularly uh, cost estimating. And that we would likely have to go back out to an RFQ. Um, the approval of town as the OPM, um, we have to submit our credentials. They have to review them. Um, there may even be a review by the attorney general's office. And uh, so that's that's module two. Um, and once we form the team, then we initiate the feasibility study. And the feasibility study is composed of two different parts. First, PDP, the programming, and then the uh, PSR where we analyze different options, design options. And then again, a review, wherever this group, this board group is, we have to go back to the, uh, to the MSBA board, get their approval before we can move on to the schematic design. And the schematic is a detailed schematic of the preferred option uh, along with a detailed cost estimate. Um, during that, somewhere in that process, we, I'm also recommending that we bring on a construction manager at risk to assist us with the um, logistics and then functioning as a second cost estimate for the schematic design. Um, once that's complete, that will then define the warrant article and the um, ballot article for the funding of the overall project. And that's what Anne was talking about. So we would be trying to achieve module five in advance of that October, 2025 um, special town meeting and the November election that follows. And in fact, it, it needs to happen in advance of that because the language for those respective um, warrant articles and um, ballot questions needs to be formulated in it well in advance. So it's a challenge. Hey, getting back to the uh, uh, acceleration of uh, module one uh, to 90 days, are we, um, uh, are we comfortable that the MSBA will be receptive to the acceleration that we're contemplating? We haven't had that detailed discussion, but um, it, it, um, at least from the staff that we've spoken to so far, they, um, they say that some communities have done that and there's language that indicates that if we do intend to accelerate the local authorization and funding, that those warrant articles follow their language. Mm -hmm. And so town council has been reviewing those along with um, uh, and I think you all have been putting that together for town council. Correct. MSBA council also has reviewed the language at this point. Um, so um, because the select board is putting together the warrant, those things have been submitted. Excellent. Well, from, from MSBA's point of view, uh, they know that we can do this. You know, they, they I think they feel relatively comfortable that, if anybody can do it, Town of Needham can make this happen. So from that point of view, because they saw how we accelerated things on, on uh, Sunita Williams and the successful outcome. So from a point of view of track record, uh, I think there's some confidence already built into MSBA, even though some of the people have changed. Mm -hmm. that's, that's my opinion, that's not theirs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, and I, of course, I would totally agree with you, but um, we we do have to go through their process, and they have absolutely they have multiple checks and balances. And I think there's a bigger picture in terms of their own cash flow 
and the other projects that they have in the pipeline. And when they, um, uh, cause they have to do, I gather some significant borrowing and this past year coming out of COVID, they have, um, they've actually increased funding for a number of schools. Um, all of that gets factored into their equation and decision-making process. Um, so I, I also shared um, with you um, some of our, uh, the feasibility budget, which um, is uh, perhaps generous in some areas. Let me see. And I'll ask Don and uh, Jason to close their eyes. <laughs> um, we we built in some contingency within the um, uh, design budget, but it would need it would require a um, a full A and E team of all of the various um, consultants, uh, including a theater AV consultant, um, because we have that existing theater, and we're pushing some of the improvements that were part of the um, theater sound and light study uh, into, into this project. Um, these allowances for site survey, geotechnical, hazmat, other things um, aren't fixed in stone but uh, we will need to go through the um, permitting process on the project. And so wet, everything from wetlands delineation to traffic studies, uh, monitoring wells, um, as we uh, existing building survey, uh, we have general plans, but we don't have all the details of, of how the building is put together. Um, and then um, the whole analysis of uh, sustainable options, um, rooftop solar, geothermal, all of those will come into play. As I think we discussed before, um, MSBA does have some uh, added reimbursement points. And given the town's climate action plan, and roadmap, I think we would be going after those additional incentives, which potentially are three to four additional reimbursement points. Um, between that and the IRA funding reimbursements and uh, Eversource reimbursements, um, I think we've heard from Doreen Whittier that it can be a cost neutral equation to really push the limit on sustainability. Um, we have put into um, the upcoming budget for an additional building design and construction staff member, a senior project manager. And part of that funding would come out of this uh, OPM budget but we would also need to bring on board a, an independent OPM um, for cost estimating and um, consulting, much like we did with, with uh, Daedalus on the Sinita project. And given that we would want the OPM to carry through the project, I don't think we could use um, Hill International um, for this, otherwise they wouldn't necessarily be available for us um, given our contract limitations at the end of the project. Uh, and, and again, on um, Sunita Williams, uh, we, we seconded 
um, one senior staff member and one junior staff member during construction. Now, would we need that here? I, I think we will um, need some assistance given the complexity of the project. And then finally, we're budgeting $75,000 for the CMR. Given a, a total budget of uh, 2.75 million. And I, I did forward around in my email some of the cost comparisons with other uh, from the MSBA charts. I don't know if you looked at that, but there's a whole range of funding that we've seen. And um, it's between, uh, you know, if this is the estimated construction cost at this point, uh, we're, we're within range, I think, of where other projects typically get, get funded uh, for this, this period of time. Um, uh, thanks to uh, some of Don and Michelle's and, and Jason's input. Don, do you have any other comments? No, Hank, I think you've, uh, you've covered it quite well. It looks, looks comprehensive. Um, Hank, I've got a question. Yep. Uh, you mentioned earlier in your discussion that you thought we might even need to go in front of the, before the attorney general for some decision. And what would that be for? It's for the employee owner project manager. And, and definitely before, um, in the selection of the uh, construction manager at risk, we, we would need to get authorization to be able to take that approach. Okay, and, and why wouldn't that just come from MSBA? Um, the OPM would, the CMR needs to go through the attorney general. Don, you have a comment or a question? <clears throat> Yeah, just just a uh, just just a clarification. It'd actually, be the Inspector General's office. Inspector General, sorry. Yeah, minor clarification. So that's, that's the same group that uh, we met with when we decided to use a uh, um, CMR uh, for the uh, police and fire. Yes. Um, and, and likewise with the high school edition. Right. So would we really have to meet with them or would we just submit something to them? We submit an application. Uh, okay. I think on the OPM, we had a formal meeting with the MSBA for Sinita Williams. Yeah. Because um, they, they don't have, they don't participate in the selection of the OPM, but they do approve them. Okay. I guess I, I was, I, I, know, I know why they wanted to meet with us for police and fire because they were truly independent projects that we wanted to do as one project and they saw it as multiple projects and they felt that that was restricting the uh, opportunity for for um, sub bidders, um, but in this particular case, I, I, I guess I, I'm not sure why they, they uh, would would need to get involved other than to know that we're doing it. I, I think George, if I recall from conversations I had with Steve Popper when I came on board, because the CMR had been selected before I I came on board, but that's required of all use of a CMR. You have to get approval through the IG. Okay. That's the state, that's the state reg. Yeah. And as you may recall, there's there'll be a uh, subcommittee of this committee. Um, we'll have to go out to RFQ 
um, receive and review and score and rank the uh, submittals. Um, right. So there's a whole process we have to go yeah. through. Well, I understand all that, but uh, but I was surprised that on something as straightforward as as using a CMR in a fairly non-controversial decision in a sense, in my opinion, anyway, um, we wouldn't need to do anything but just submit our statement that we're going to be using a CM, CM at risk. But anyway, whatever we have to do. Agreed. You're running a little bit over, so uh, we'll, we'll probably try to wrap up uh, this conversation. It's a very important one, of course. Uh, any uh, further comments uh, or, or uh, questions regarding the Pollard School uh, and MSBA uh, application process? Okay, uh, hearing none, we'll uh, move on to the next agenda item. Uh, Don, Jason, and Michelle, thank you very much for joining us as always. We'll thank you, everyone. Down the road. Thank you. Okay. Good night. Good night. Okay, uh, the next item on the agenda is the uh, capital improvement plan for FY 2025. There are three components uh, that are of interest to uh, this committee, the theater renovation update, uh, the library update, and DPW update. And uh, I know we have a couple of, of a few guests here, um, Leanne and uh, is Tim here? I don't see Tim, but uh, Gene is here. It's actually Dimitri. I made a mistake. Oh, my apologies, Dimitri. Okay, great. for the library. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Well, welcome all. Thank you uh, to our guests, and um, I will um, ask uh, Hank to uh, lead off the discussion. So we're. Uh, I also sent around our overall project planning schedule. Um, with the various projects that we're we're working on at this time. Um, and this is broken down by quarter. It shows uh, we were just talking about the uh, the Pollard project and our sequence that we're looking to go through there. Um, the the other uh, projects include the DPW. I think I'll touch on them last. Since uh, Anne and Leanne are here, I'll jump to the uh, school auditorium, uh, sound and light projects. Um, and as you may recall, we had um, safety and compliance or SAC work that was done last summer. And there's uh, another round of that, SAC 2, which um, we are um, trying, we we're trying to move that forward so that construction could potentially occur um, this summer on those SAC2 items. Um, the initial funding would come from um, from the school department for the for the design, but then construction funding of a little over a hundred thousand uh, would come at annual town meeting. Um, we are, we are hoping that we would get sufficient bidding and competitive market to be able to do that during the summer of 2024. Um, but if not, then it would have to be spread out um, over uh, various future uh, school vacation uh, weeks during the, um, the coming school year. Um, there's a possibility that there'll be funding for this Newman TSU, which stands for Theater System Upgrades. Um, and there has been, and how would you say, uh, significant interest? To say the least. To say the least, <laughs> yes. Um, significant interest by um, theater groups to proceed as urgently as possible uh, at least first with the Newman project. Um, and instead of doing it in phases, TSU one and then TSU two and then TSU three, um, doing all of those upgrades at once, um, getting the design work completed um, during the coming year, getting appropriations uh, annual town meeting of 2025 and then doing construction where possible during the summer, but likely spread out during the year. Um, and um, 
so there's there's pressure whether that will happen or not um, this year is is still not clear. Um, the The draft budget has been put together, and in that draft budget, it was funded in 2025. But um, there are explorations <laughs> um, to move it faster. Uh, and I know Barry's very anxious to take on the SAC2 projects. <laughs> um, but we, we will uh, we'll share in that responsibility um, moving forward. Uh, so that, that's the theater. The other components of the theater, particularly the Pollard, would likely follow uh, in line with the Pollard renovation itself. And then the, the high school would be the last in the sequence, at least currently. Um, and that funding for design wouldn't come until 2026. Um, are there, oh, and I, I should mention that uh, we've reviewed with town council um, that we can proceed with um, the uh, design designer who did the feasibility study, as long as we can come to terms on negotiating the fees. And so we would be uh, moving forward definitely with the SAC2 work with Hueshot International. I've had a preliminary back and forth with them and um, uh, asked for some modifications, but um, that would be proceeding and the funding in, in this would really go through, not this committee, at least for the SAC2 project, uh, would, would go through the school department as did the prior funding and the prior work uh, because it's well below the half a million dollar threshold. Whereas the, the Newman project would come back to this committee. Any questions on the uh, theater? And do you want to add anything to that? Um, I, I don't think so. Uh, I don't know if Michael wants to add anything. I think we're hopeful that the schedule can be accelerated. Um, we are, I think the town is awaiting the outcome of the MSBA um, funding decisions and the status of its overall financing before it makes um, additional decision making decisions in the area. I guess I would just say I would take your word explorations to indications. I mean, there's been enough conversation about this, enough understanding with uh, the town manager and the uh, superintendent, everybody involved, that th this is extremely important, accelerating this Newman project. Um, and so, you know, while there is no commitment, I would say it's, you know, people are working hard to see if we can make it happen if all the funding for the other pieces you know can work that way as Anne has indicated um and with the pollard project if assuming that that work gets intertwined with the full renovation um as happened with the newman renovation um it it would get into the total construction project cost but there would be specific exclusions that the MSBA would likely um, put on that work that's within the theater itself. Since a middle school program for the MSBA does not include a theater, it includes a cafetorium or a gymatorium, um, they're likely to fund the stage components but not the theater components um, of that work. But that would come out as a negotiation um, during schematic design and in the project funding agreement. Mm -hmm. They generally don't fund that sort of thing, Hank, as you, as you know, I think. Yeah, and we, we've had those negotiations with MSBA before um, when we added <laughs> to the gym storage, but it, it gen, generally tends to be a, a unit cost per square foot. That's a deduction. Um, yep. 
we would we would just want to have those conversations starting early, um, just so it's you know very clear that this is an important part of the project for us, um, and you know we just have to deal with doing the costs and having the MSBA be comfortable with what we're doing and why we're doing it. But yes, yeah, and, another and, uh, thing to do. And and likewise with the two gyms. So two gyms are not allowed within the current MSBA program for a middle school. So keeping the two that we have, um, they might fund any improvements that we make on one, but not on the other. Uh, Leanne, you have a question? I did. I just wanted to make sure that I understood that there is um, a designer that's included in the feasibility study for Pollard, right? Specifically for auditoriums. Just wanted to make sure that I was understanding it correctly. There, so Leanne, we have to go through a designer selection process with the MSBA. It's not solely a town. So the current designer who's done the feasibility study for the theater may not be the designer on the Pollard project um, working with the architect. They, each architectural team can assemble their preferred theater consultant, but all of the information from the feasibility study would be fed to that team. Okay. There's still, a, isn't there still a possibility that we could use the same one, Hank? If the yeah, there's a there's sure. a possibility, but we we wouldn't be able to hire them independently, right? Unless we totally divorce that project and proceed with it faster or something like that. No, that that wasn't my question. My question was in this next phase of the feasibility study for the MSBA. I understood that there was a specific um, request to have an auditorium sort of consultant as part of that. Am I, I just want yes. to make sure I'm understanding that correctly. Yes. And when we write okay. the, when we write the request for qualifications for the designer, we would include that as one of the requirements for their team. Got it. Thank you. You know, and Hank, I know you mentioned the two gyms, the gyms, but we also have to, or should acknowledge that, you know, the project could involve starting over again and not necessarily retaining the Pollard structure as it is. Again, it's all part yep. of the process, but it isn't, you know, it isn't a given that we would be renovating what is there. It may be a complete replacement. Okay. Okay. That's correct. One of the requirements is in the study to do a total teardown and a, and a total new build. That will be one of the options we're required to study. Okay, um, Hank, uh, if there are no other questions on the uh, theater, uh, lighting, and sound, I'd like to shift over to the library space utilization. Yep. So we're also anticipating um, funding at May Annual Town Meeting to fund the first phase of the teen and tween area. Um, again, uh, we, we can and, and will work with UTIL the designer that the PPPC selected um, for this project. I think they I did a very good job of navigating um, the, the feasibility process. Uh, and in this instance, and I've had preliminary discussions with them, um, they, um, given that it's mainly an interior renovation, they feel that they can accelerate uh, the design uh, and get through um, schematic DD and uh, construction documents, um, perhaps even by the end of 2024, so that uh, we could potentially have bids in hand um, prior to annual town meeting in 2025. Um, and their work previously, we would not be revisiting the total design, uh, but instead focusing on what was agreed upon um, during the feasibility stage and really getting down into the nitty gritty and um, selection of um, interior finishes and um, 
and and looking at the sound isolation issues in more detail and and any mechanical and electrical changes in more detail um so that one would also be going concurrently um, with these other projects that we're looking at. Um, and the anticipation would be that um, construction would follow uh, annual town meeting. Um, it probably could not be done during the summertime, but, um, and Dimitri, correct me if I'm wrong, but, um, we would instead have to kind of isolate out the construction area um, uh, while the the library remains open. Um, and we haven't yet uh, proposed an alternate accommodation for the collection that would be disturbed during that construction. Um, but <clears throat> if necessary, um, alternate accommodations might be provided within the library itself or good old hillside <laughs> school might come into play again. We'd have to see. And all of that would come out of the detailed design. Hey, any questions or comments regarding the library space utilization? Okay, hearing none, uh, let's proceed then to DPW. <laughs> yeah, and again, it's a similar sequence. Um, I do have some slides if people need to refresh their memories as to the preferred option. But in, in this instance, we would be anticipating annual <coughs> funding an annual town meeting this spring, um, going through the full design and permitting process uh, to arrive at special town meeting in October of 2025 uh, for the construction funding. And um, right now, uh, just given the um, original estimate and um, cost escalation, the, that project is somewhere in the 14 to $15 million range. Um, I can share with you the prior That. As you may recall, um, there are several components. Um, the first step was related to expansion of the Jack Cogswell building. Um, what that did, this addition um, to the right of the existing building, which is grayed out there, would enable the fleet division to move over uh, to this location. And um, that would free up space at 470 and enable the reconstruction of 470 in two phases um, the first being an addition to the six bay garage, which is a bit to the north here, and then demolition and reconstruction of the, of the garage, uh, pulling it back from the water course, which runs parallel to Dedham Avenue. Um, this first phase over at uh, Jack Cogswell uh, would be a, a little over 12,000 square foot addition um, there would be um, offices and um, uh, facilities for the employees, which are those of you have, who have toured the existing facility know how um, ancient and deficient those are. Um, and then it would enable uh, the relocation of that fleet department over there and um, and then that repurposing of the existing building. The current sequence would be uh, funding at April town meeting 
the design and permitting, uh, and then uh, construction funding for this phase one in October. And if phase two proceeds according to this plan, then in annual town meeting of 2025, there would be additional funding for the Wash Bay and the Six Bay Garage addition. Now that schedule is still um, obviously to be confirmed, but that's part of the uh, five-year capital plan as spelled out. Um, are there, and, and uh, I should also say that um, we are in discussion with uh, Weston and Sampson uh, regarding fees. Uh, we couldn't authorize them to proceed unless and until we get that design funding, but there will be a warrant article put before town meeting um, for that design funding. Any other questions on that one? Yeah, I think we're, I think we're all set. Hank. Okay? So, um, Thank you for the update. Appreciate it. Okay. Um, we have uh, just a few items uh, under miscellaneous for PBC. Um, Shane, you're welcome to stay, but uh, feel free to depart if you wish. <laughs> it's up to you. Okay. Thank, take, thanks. Take care. Um, so we have uh, just a couple of items uh, for uh, of uh, new business, other business. Uh, and um, it was a request uh, that we uh, discuss the uh, um, construct contractor member. Um, um, a slot on, on the committee. And uh, just to, to update uh, things, we, we know that there is at least one applicant uh, to this point that uh, uh, that individual will be uh, proceeding to uh, an interview with the uh, appointing uh, authority. Um, and uh, beyond that, I know what, George, you wanted to uh, comment on it. And also, I believe uh, Lynn, you might want have some uh, thoughts as well, but we're happy to, to open up the uh, uh, open the discussion up to the committee. But George, begin with you. Yes, <clears throat> um, I, I think um, I, I I saw the request that was advertised, and it indicated um, contractor slash architect, and and uh, in general, that's not. You know that's that's a good dis description of it. However, um, that's an area that I think we really need to get uh, as much input from a contractor as we can. It's not been a strong position on the board on the PBBC over the years. Uh, we'd we'd like it to be, but it it hasn't been to try to find someone. Uh, in that area hasn't been easy, but I, I still feel fairly strongly that we ought to take our time and, and not just fill a position on the building committee, but to try to try to search for someone who has some good construction experience that could lend their their talent and, and knowledge uh, to the work that we do on all the projects. So that, I, I wrote an email to I think I copied just about everybody on it, um, indicating my feelings about that. I don't know how strong the committee feels about it, but I, I think it's it's something that we ought to work on. Okay. Uh, I should note that the um, um, the application uh, process is still open. There are certainly um, there's you know, other candidates are welcome. Uh, that's always, uh, you know, certainly, uh, I, I know uh, there's one active application as we speak in process, but there certainly might be others, and uh, we would encourage uh, uh, applications uh, to the committee. Uh, know, Lynn, did you uh, want to comment on uh, on um, anything regarding this uh, topic at this point? No, not really. I shared my thoughts. Okay. Um, I think when look for new members, we should and be as broad as possible in the exercise and I feel like the way we end up with the same folks on committees as people go from committee to committee and they're friends of people on the committees and it kind of just gets itself over and over again. so um, if we were not in a rush then I would welcome continuing to do some outreach but I understand that you want to fill the position and I understand I'm comfortable with that if that's 
want to go. I've sent at least a dozen LinkedIn invites um, folks who are either connected to Needham or live in Needham that are developers or contractors. I've only got four responses. A couple people have moved away from Needham, but they still work in Needham. Um, and pretty much everybody says they're not interested. And I try and push them to the website, say, go look at it and see if it's of interest to you. And I'm not getting very far. I went through the list that um, I got from Michael, and I was peeling through that list as well, doing some outreach on LinkedIn. And again, from from my perspective, if you're not, if we're not going to do a bigger ask, like locally to the town, it's just going to go through the side. I think it's going to be difficult to get fresh blood. I no, appreciate your your thoughts on that. Uh, any other comments from the committee uh, about the um, uh, recruitment process? Okay. Uh, well, anyway, as I uh, as I noted, the uh, you know certainly uh, applications can continue to be welcome, and uh, uh, you know certainly it's always a good thing to have uh, a number of folks uh, applying. So uh, hopefully uh, the message will get out uh, through uh, through this uh, this particular uh, meeting uh, resource and uh, our individual efforts. And thank you all for everyone who has uh, kind of reached out to folks. Appreciate that uh, that, that um, commitment. Hey. I, I did have one additional comment, if I could. Yes, please. Um, is is there an opportunity for us to pass those feelings uh, along to this to the selection committee? I mean, they they do realize that this is a position that's important to the PBBC, and that we had someone who was in the construction field um, uh, previously and would like someone again from that field as long as they were gonna contribute. So is there a process where my comments, for example, uh, about having someone with a construction background be passed on to them so they don't simply look at this as an opportunity to fill a slot? Uh, you can pass it on yourself. I, I, but I think that they, they need to be aware of what we would like to do in terms of broadening the strength of the committee uh, with people with different backgrounds uh, and experiences. So, well, Stuart, maybe I can ask uh, you this question. Uh, in the past, uh, we had communications uh, historically with the uh, the appointing authority on topics such as this in terms of, of recruitment, uh, candidate recruitment, et cetera. Yeah, I mean, I think that that um, we've had communications, but I, I I'm not sure, George, how. I mean, my view is that we have a candidate, and as much as we want the construction piece of it, I, I just I feel like the architects and the people in the business will have some of that. Um, and it's better to have a committee than than have a continual gap. But I also wonder if we were to pass it on to the committee, I mean, excuse me, the appointing authority of where we feel we really need that, would we be swaying an evaluation? So we I might, just say that off we, the cuff, you know, we in might terms just of what be, you're asking, Richard. Well, it might we might be just postponing the decision uh, to see if there are any other candidates. You know, it takes yes. a while for people to decide this. Um, yeah. And uh, so, I, you know, whether whether it's postponing a decision and then if we don't get further applications that are more nearly what we want. See, I, yeah. I, I don't even know. I mean, I know who the person is that they're looking at, but I don't know what their background is in in the area of construction. I have no yeah. idea. And, you know, if it's simply you know, an architectural background with not much construction experience, then that's a, that's a tough sell to me. Well, not that the person wouldn't be good. I'm not saying that. But also the chair, I think, Richard, at this point, you'd also be on the interview process. Uh, it's not, I know it's that not been the case. Okay. 
I'm not that's, sure about that. That's typically not the case. Okay. The way the the way the uh, bylaw is written, uh, the chair of the building committee is not involved in the process. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, well, I don't know if you were. A not in terms but... of the actual uh, the actual um, vote per se, but I believe, in, for example, with Lynn talking to Lynn and through through my term talking to various people through the process. But I don't think as a I agree as a formal part of the process. Um, the PVC chair is not a voting or, or an appointing authority there, but but they have the input. Okay. That's that's what I always thought. Okay. But but I, I do agree. I think I think as a committee we should be uh aware and and trying to get that construction piece within the committee member. Okay. Well, let me, uh, let's, oh, uh, Erwin, you have a comment or question? No, just, uh, I, I feel the same way. So however that input could be provided, I think would be beneficial to the committee because I feel that that's been uh, a perspective that's been lacking as well. Even if, even though we had someone in that slot, uh, I don't feel like we've gotten the input that would have been helpful in the past. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, let me uh, let me see what I can do on, on that front. Uh, I, I, I would presume that that um, uh, communications to the uh, pointing authority would go through the, the town manager. So uh, I would start with the town manager and proceed accordingly. So let me see. Let me see what I can do on that front. But uh, again, I, I think uh, I think the, the individual uh, that's uh, that's under consideration would be a strong addition to the to the uh, to the uh, committee. But we'll uh, we'll. We'll uh, see. We'll certainly, make our comments or your comments comments known. All right. Um, just a couple other housekeeping items. Um, I think uh, Hank, you were going to and and uh, Catherine, you're going to check on April twenty second. Uh, that was not a good date. To, uh, and uh, in terms of that meeting that week, have we have we for, formally rescheduled the meeting to the the twenty fourth? Is that April twenty fourth? I believe that was um, the decision at the last m meeting. Yeah, I, th I think my, my recollection was that uh, uh, I, th I think we were going to just double check to make sure there were no material conflicts <laughs> with other other uh, proceedings in town on that, on that evening. That was my, I think, Hank, you had mentioned that you were going to uh, kind of double check on that. Oh, you're, you're on mute. Sorry. <laughs> the... Uh, FinCom has not published their uh, hearing schedule, and so it's an unknown to me whether there would be potential conflict leading up to uh, town meeting. Okay. Um, and as you know, the capital projects oftentimes um, get get pushed toward the end of their uh, review. Yep. And I I was not able to get anything definitive out of uh, Dave Davison. Either. Okay. Well, maybe um, one one idea would be to uh, to meet in person on the twenty fourth at town hall if there's space available. Uh, that way, uh, in the event we we do need to uh, to break to, uh, um, for example, participate in a income uh, hearing, we would be able to do so. Just a suggestion. I don't know if that's feasible or not, uh, Catherine, at this stage, whether uh, we could book a, a room in town hall. Suitable room. I can see if one's available. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So more to follow on that. Uh, but that, that uh, again, that would sort of solve the problem if uh, in the event that a, a conflict does arise, we do need to attend another meeting. We can kind of work around that. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. And then... Um, Last item I have is just uh, open discussion. Any other items of interest uh, to the group? Uh, please feel free at this time. Okay. Not hearing any, so I think we'll uh, we can now uh, I think adjourn. We're a little bit uh, behind schedule tonight, but that's okay. I think it was a very good discussion. 
Hope everyone enjoyed the Super Bowl last night. I know I'm very tired and I want to <laughs> I want to I want to adjourn for the evening <laughs> very quickly. Uh, but uh, disappointing result. I was rooting for San Francisco for a variety of reasons. But uh, anyway, uh, it is what it is. And uh, we have another dynasty in the making. And uh, <laughs> it's there's the real there's the real vote for San Francisco. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Listen, the game made my granddaughter very happy because she gets to go to the parade in Kansas City. Oh, oh, there you go. Excellent. Good, good. Excellent. Uh, it shows you one thing. Don't bet on against Mahomes. Same way, same way you didn't bet against Brady. Don't yeah. bet against Mahomes. That's right. You, no. you give him a minute and a half at the end of the game. Oh yeah, and he'll take you apart. Absolutely. I just, when when San Francisco didn't get that that first down mm -hmm. and had to kick the field goal, I yep. said the game That's is it. over. Kansas City won, <laughs> and and it was and I was right. I was I was really yeah, for if, San if Francisco. If you could kick but, an extra point, you wouldn't have overtime. Yeah, or, well, or you know, give the ball away at the 16 yard line. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> or receiving the ball and receiving the ball on the uh, overdime was a mistake. Yeah, yeah. I, I heard someone someone on the train today say that they they turned it off as soon as it was going. They knew it was going to overtime because they knew what the result was going to be, and they, <laughs> they didn't bother with it. I have to tell you, I agree with it. He's he's tough to beat, man. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Oh well. Well, anyway, onward and upward, and hopefully, uh, better days are ahead for the our beloved Patriots. Anyway, with that, thank you very much uh, for uh, this evening's uh, meeting. I'm going to just uh, uh, ask for a motion to uh, to adjourn the meeting. Is there is there I'll a move. motion? Okay, and a second. Second. Okay, thank you. A uh, quick roll call vote, uh, uh, Stuart. Aye. Lynn? Aye. George? Aye. Erwin? Aye. And the chair votes aye. Thank you very much. Have a good evening, everyone. Take care. Have a good, good one. Stay safe tomorrow. Yes.